Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Greetings to our viewers at home. Uh, welcome once more to our devotion. The topic for this devotion, uh, we'll be looking into two groups, the two groups. Um, let us pray. Father, we thank you for giving us this moment. Bless us, sanctify us, and purify us, and help us to understand your weight. In Christ we pray. Amen. If you take a look uh, in the world, um, you find that we always have choices to make. At times, there will be many options to make those choices from. At times, we'll only have two options. But when you take a look at it in the Bible, you find that when you read Revelation chapter 12, the Bible tells us that there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought, and the dragon and his angels fought, the dragon being Lucifer. Um, before his fall, he was Lucifer. Um, and from there on, there were, there were two groups. You know, when God created everything, um, there were no groups. You know, um, you didn't have to choose between right and wrong. Everything was just right. Everything was just good. Until evil came into the world, where now people have to choose between what is good and what is evil. The angels in heaven um, were the followers of their maker, their creator, Jesus Christ. But when Lucifer envied the position of Jesus Christ, some of the angels now had to choose between Jesus and following Lucifer. And unfortunately, that dilemma came here um, to planet Earth. Uh, in the Garden of Eden, um, Satan, in a form of a snake, um, deceived Eve, saying that if she eats from the forbidden tree, she will not die, but will actually be intelligent and be equal with God in terms of intellect. And she envied that. She wanted to be like a God. Um, so ever since, we find that we have to choose between two groups. Um, now, we read in Matthew chapter 13, where we find the parable um, of the sower um, when the seed was being planted. That's a parable that we find um, in the Bible. But we'll read verse 30. Um, we'll focus on the parable of the wheat and the tares in this context because I think it is more applicable and makes more sense. Verse 30 says of Matthew chapter 13, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to bend them. But they gather the wheat into my barn. Now, we find here a person going into his own field. The Bible puts forth um, an example here, a parable about the kingdom of heaven. Before we get to heaven, these are the things that will be taking place. The kingdom of heaven here is likened unto a man which planted a seed or sowed a good seed in his field. The man has a field, he plants a good seed. And when they went to sleep, someone came and planted a bad seed. An enemy came and saw tears amongst the wheat and went his way. Now, this man is very evil. You can tell that this person is indeed an enemy. I'm sure the field was big. He or she could have planted the tears on another portion of the field. But to confuse people, even the owner of the field, he plants the tears amongst the wheat, and then he goes his way. 
people wake up in the morning, they make sure that they take care of the field and the seed that has been planted. When the blade was sprung up, it brought forth fruit and it appeared also the tares. And the laborers come to the owner of the field and they say, did you not plant a good seed? How come then that it has tares? And he says to them, an enemy has done this. And they volunteer saying, allow us to remove the tares then so that we may remain with the wheat because that's what we want. What can we do with the tares? And that is when now verse 30 comes into the picture. Let them grow together until the harvest. In a family, you may find that not all children are good. There might be that one or those ones that may not be following the instructions or the rules of the family. It's the same thing in the church. This field where the seed is planted, I would limit it to the church instead of the entire world for now. This field is the church. And God, or Jesus Christ, plants the seed using the preachers who are preaching to the congregation. Now, the preachers are preaching a good seed. Those are the true preachers of Jesus Christ, those who follow him. Because in terms of the Bible, we do have preachers who are being used by the devil. So many false prophets have come out of this world, have gone out and are deceiving a lot of people. So we take it that these are the preachers, the ministers of Jesus Christ, plants a good seed. And then the devil now would use those false prophets. There are people in the church, when you read in the book of Acts, we will quickly go there. Uh, Acts chapter 20, there are words that are mentioned here in this text. It says in verse 30, also of your own selves, Shall men arise, speak, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after themselves? The disciples are saying, we are clear from the blood of all men. For we have told you everything that God wanted us to tell you. But after we leave, you can read the chapter, chapter 20, the verses before verse 30. After we leave, others will come after us. They will be lying. They will distort the truth because they want to have followers. We have people like that, unfortunately, in our denominations, irrespective of which de denomination you come from. People who want followers, they speak lies. They distort the truth of God. They deceive others. That is why in many denominations, if not all, we always have these two groups. And these two groups, we also find them when we read in the book of Genesis, um, Cain and Abel. Cain was, it, it said that the same parents can give birth to children who are not the same. One is good, the other is evil. Abel did all that which was good in the sight of God. But Cain was of the evil one in such a way that he even killed his own brother. And in Genesis chapter 6, uh, we find God looking at the entire world. And there was a time where God was not happy about the way people were living, in such a way that the Bible says that it repented God that he had created men in this world. And we find that the sons of Cain, were living in the valleys. And the sons of Seth, which are known as the sons of God, were living on the mountains. Now, as long as there was that separation, the people of God remained pure. But there was a time now when those who are high there in the mountains looked down there in the valleys and saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they decided to come down and choose uh, wives from them as they pleased. Now, we always have choices to make in this world. 
between good and evil. It will always be there. You know, there was a, a, a time where I asked myself a question. Since the devil is evil, why is it that God doesn't just destroy him so that we can live peacefully without sinning? You know, so there won't be any evil in this world. But the character of the devil must be fully manifested so that when God judges, all people, all creatures will say, indeed, God, your judgment is just and fair. Even the devil himself will see that he indeed is a sinner and he deserves that type of a punishment. So the two groups have always been there. You go to Matthew chapter 25, we read about the 10 virgins and the number is split into two, equally so. Five are wise, five are foolish. And you and I have to choose between these two groups where we fall, whether we fall on those that are wise or whether we fall on those that are good. And both, I don't know whether to say unfortunately or fortunately, both of these virgins, both groups are using the word of God. And it's so amazing that while we use one word, one Bible, we come up with different groups in the same denomination. But the Bible is one. It's because the devil is there trying to influence God's people to follow him. There are people who love followers. There are people who love leading others. It has always been like that. And in the very same text of Matthew 25, we will read verse 33 of Matthew 25. The Bible says, And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Here also, when it comes to the last judgment now, we see that there are two groups. The sheep are on the right, the goats are on the left. And when you read the book of John, chapter 10, you find that Jesus is the shepherd, we are the sheep. So the sheep are the followers of Jesus Christ. And obviously then the goats are the followers of the devil, unfortunately. Now, not all creatures would go to heaven. We have to make choices when we have these two groups. And unless we know the word of God and we have the Holy Spirit, we might make a wrong choice. So we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We need to read God's word for our own selves and know what it says so that we may be able to choose wisely. We need to follow Jesus each and every day. Every day when you wake up, you make a conscious decision that today I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Whatever the devil whispers in my ears, I will not listen. But I will only listen to the voice of my shepherd, which is Jesus Christ. That's why he says, my sheep know my voice. We can only know his voice when we read the Bible daily. That some of us, every day we are in social media. And you may find that one spends two, three, or four hours on social media. But we hardly sp spend five minutes reading the word of God. We listen to all these other voices except the voice of Jesus Christ. Now, how do we make right decisions then? when we are only listening to the voice of other men and women, except the voice of Jesus Christ. A day should not pass by without me and you reading from the word of God, so that when we find ourselves in two groups, we will always make a right decision because we have read from the word of God and his Holy Spirit will give us wisdom to make correct decisions. May God help us. We are living in this age where there will always be two groups. There were two groups in heaven when Lucifer sinned. There were two groups here on earth when Adam men Eve fell into sin. They will always be there until the last judgment. May we make correct decisions. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your weight. We pray for wisdom that your Holy Spirit may guide us to make the right decisions. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <music>